Hey friends, welcome back to the Chris Chow Show where every week I break down the most important business news in Australia and around the world. This week we have Dolomites leaving Queensland schools, Spotify launching paid podcasts, Asahi purchasing Allpress, and a game publisher buying Bitcoin. Before we jump into it, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. The Queensland government will be discontinuing Commonwealth Bank's Dolomite program after the contract ends in July. The school banking program has been around for 90 years and it was first instituted when the Commonwealth Bank was still government owned and operated all the way back in 1931. Queensland joins Victoria and the ACT as the third state in Australia to discontinue school banking as a result of a two-year review by the Australian Securities and Investments Commission. The review found that the school banking programs were actually more of a marketing scheme aimed at building brand loyalty. And unfortunately, the banks were unable to demonstrate that the school programs improved saving habits. My key takeaway from this is that Dolomites is arguably the best marketing strategy by any bank in Australia. I know so many people who are still with Commonwealth Bank simply because they opened a Dolomites account when they were in primary school. In fact, a 2017 survey found that 40% of Australians are still with the same bank they signed up with as a child. Spotify is launching paid podcasts as it continues to dominate the podcast space. This new feature will be facilitated through Anchor, a podcast creation tool that Spotify purchased back in 2019 for reportedly 140 million US dollars. How it will work is that podcasters will be able to select specific episodes that are only available to their paid subscribers. The service was initially trialed with a few independent creators and is now being expanded to those who signed up for the waitlist. The rollout will be limited to the US market initially and there will be three monthly pricing options, $2.99, $4.99 and $7.99. Interestingly, podcasters won't have to actually pay Spotify anything for the first two years. They will have to cover the cost of the transaction fee that is being done through Spotify's payment partner Stripe. From 2023 onwards, Spotify will then start to take a 5% cut of the subscription revenue. This is significantly less than what Apple is planning to charge through their new paid podcast service that will take 15-30% to 30 of revenue. Spotify also announced that its Spotify audience network will be made available to independent creators from the 1st of May. The Spotify audience network is an audio advertising marketplace that allows advertisers to reach listeners through ads. This means independent podcasters can now insert ads from the network into their podcast when it's played through Spotify. Similar to how YouTube allows creators to turn ads on for their YouTube videos. My key takeaway is that Spotify has recognized a huge opportunity in the podcast landscape and it is splashing cash to acquire as many podcast businesses as it can. It's already spent hundreds of millions of dollars purchasing podcast networks, Gimlet Media and The Ringer, it signed an exclusive licensing deal with Joe Rogan and has bought up several audio startups such as Anchor FM and The Megaphone. Japanese beverage giant Asahi has purchased the Melbourne-based coffee brand Allpress Espresso for an undisclosed amount. The coffee company was founded by Michael Allpress and started life as a single coffee roastery in New Zealand back in 1989 before it crossed the ditch to Australia in the 2000s. Today, Allpress has gone global with operations in the UK, Singapore and Japan. According to the company's 2020 financial report, its Australian revenues added up to $23.6 million with a profit of $653,000. The bulk of the revenue comes from its wholesale business, which sold 1,500 tons of coffee beans around the world. This deal is Asahi's first major acquisition since it purchased Carlton and United Breweries back in 2019 for $16 billion. Some other Aussie and Kiwi brands that Asahi currently owns include Shreps Australia, Charlie's Juices, and everyone's favorite bevy when they turn 18, Vodka Cruises. My key takeaway is that this acquisition will really cement Asahi's place in the Australian and New Zealand beverage market. 
And with Asahi's backing, Allpress can now supercharge their growth, potentially entering into new markets, introducing new products, and opening up more Allpress cafes. And in this week's Crypto Corner, we have a South Korean Japanese video game publisher called Nexon announcing that it's made a hundred million dollar investment in Bitcoin. To be specific, Nexon purchased 1,717 Bitcoins at an average price of 58,226 US dollars, including fees and expenses. This purchase represents less than 2% of Nexon's total cash and cash equivalents on hand. If you haven't heard of Nexon, it's a publicly listed company that's been trading on the Tokyo Stock Exchange since 2011. Some of its title games include MapleStory, Kart Rider, and Dungeon and & Fighter. My key takeaway is that we're going to keep hearing about more and more companies adding Bitcoin to the balance sheet. Bitcoin adoption is reminiscent to when the internet was first being embraced by companies in the 90s. At first, the internet was seen as a novelty and ridiculed as a gimmick. But 30 years later, it's at the very core of our society. Now, there's no guarantee that Bitcoin will become as ubiquitous as the internet, but some companies definitely believe so, and they're investing it right now. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and make sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe if you haven't already. As always, an important disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice. This video and my channel is for general information only. As with anything in life, you should do your own due diligence and seek independent advice.